Welcome to Curator with a Camera. Today we're going to be looking at Locomotive 1275. Twelve seventy five was built in eighteen seventy four in Glasgow and it was retired as long ago as nineteen twenty four, having done nine hundred thousand miles in traffic. It's basically a mineral engine, it's for moving slow moving heavy goods vehicles around the traffic of the northeast of England. Built by Dubs in Glasgow in eighteen seventy four, the design was by William Booch who uh, was the designer for the Stockton and Darlington Railway. His uh, brother was, of course, Thomas Booch, who unfortunately was the guy behind the Tay Bridge. But both Boochers were actually very good engineers. You'd find these machines on the Stockton and Darlington. You'd also find them working over Stainmoor, coming up with uh, coke from the Durham coal fields. Those are steep railways. It never seems to be good weather on the Stainmoor Road. So you've got a beautifully looking machine, but one that basically was designed to haul mineral traffic. It's worth saying in recording today, you might get a bit of background noise because we've got a lot of work going on at the museum, building Wonder Lab and other parts of the development of the museum. But nonetheless, we're gonna carry on looking closely at this marvelous old machine that's parked here in the Great Hall. So just looking at the, the front smoke box side, we've got this lovely brass wheel to uh, lock up the smoke box door. Some very old large oil lamps, northeastern oil lamps, and um, the oilers for the cylinders at the front. And then we've got, of course, we've got the, um, the two sandboxes either side because you're going to be working hard with this on coal trains. Okay, so let's just move down the side of the locomotive and have a little look more closely at, at some of its attributes. And one of the most important things about this engine is it comes from the days when they were worried about getting more power out of the machine. So Stevenson came up with the idea, that's Robert Stevenson, that what you needed to do was you needed to have longer boiler tubes than before. And the way to do that was to put the firebox where the fire was, was burning away behind the rear axle. So the firebox is there behind the rear axle. And that means that you can have a much longer set of boiler tubes, um, increasing the length by six feet or more, which means that you're gonna make more power. It does of course mean that your firebox is quite small. So you're gonna basically not want to do this sustained running with it. Um, but for mineral trains, that stopped and started a lot. It enabled you to work the machine well and enabled you to be economical on the coal. And basically your trains were not running at any kind of speed. So you didn't really need to worry about express speeds. And of course, it's six wheels means all the weight of the locomotive is on its wheels. So you're gonna get more adhesion. You're gonna get more traction from the locomotive as well. Incidentally, they got quite a short wheelbase for quite a long locomotive. So they would waddle as they were going along. And their nickname when they first came out was Hippopotamus. So this is a Hippopotamus behind us. Um, and when it finished, of course, they were just getting ready for the Stockton and Darlington centenary. So they decided to keep it and restore it. And that's why it has this fabulous elaborate Northeastern Railway livery um, lined and even with these little uh, twirly bits on the coupling rods here which I don't know you can see that but it just shows the attention to detail they wanted on the machine and you can see it here on the driving wheels so we keep the, um, the paintwork as is we haven't repainted it it's an authentic Northeastern livery um, that enables you to actually see just how elaborate uh, they were prepared to go on even a humble mineral locomotive like this. And when you get round the back, you realize 
it shows you it's a mineral locomotive in many respects because it's got the coupling here, this bit, to couple onto your coal wagon, but it's also got a pair of safety chains either side just in case the coupling snaps and therefore your train doesn't run away because don't forget there's no continuous brakes on the train. The wagons have only got a handbrake and basically you can't put a handbrake on if it starts to roll very easily. So you were worried about that and castings like that could give at any moment. Snatch would break them. So therefore you might have safety chains on it. Okay, we'll go along the top of the locomotive, just have a little look at it. And obviously up here you've got the uh, injectors that help you put water into the boiler and the whistle. And then you've got this rather splendid uh, dome, the steam dome, with its uh, safety valves, which you can adjust for the pressure in the boiler so that basically you've got a, a point where the boiler uh, safety valves will lift. And then the chimney, very distinctive looking chimney on this. Um, and then when you start looking at the machine itself, you notice that the, the running plate, which you, as the name suggests, you can walk along, uh, normally for maintenance, you would think, but these are the days when you might need to oil it as you're running along. So if you look at it, it's actually got um, a sort of cross hatching on, on the, um, the top of the splashes here, um, which means that they're thinking, well, we want to make it um, um, not too slippy. So you can walk along in your boots and oil it, which means, of course, you'd be walking along in your boots, oiling it when it's moving. And the noticeable thing here is when you walk around the engine, that on this side, it's, it's very pr pronounced, that cross hatching. But when you come around this side, it isn't. And actually, you can see it's quite worn here. And it's worn on the top here. Well, this is the driver's side of the locomotive. So from time to time, presumably, when you're going along, the driver's coming out of the cab uh, up there. And he's coming along here. And he's oiling in here. So there's all his oil pots for his engine, um, for the motion. So again, it's showing that kind of idea that you've got a mineral engine. It's not moving particularly quickly. You need to keep it maintained all the time. You need to keep it well oiled all the time. And you might therefore have to come out along the front and do some oiling on it as it's going. OK, so let's get on the foot plate. Remember what I said, you might need to walk along the outside. It's got a very big uh, set of uh, steps to get on. So let's go on the foot plate. Here we are in the cab of 1275. As you can see, it's basically open to the elements most of the time. But it's all right because they've got this, which is the, um, the Weatherall cab, the Stockton and Darlington Weatherall cab. So I guess if you're in here, you might be okay, but you wouldn't be in here that much. So you might need a hat if you work this machine. What have we got here? Well, the normal controls, basically. We've got the regulator here, which lets the steam go from the boiler to the cylinders. We've got the gauge glasses, two gauge glasses, tell you how much water there is in the boiler. And then we've got the reverser here, which is a rather extraordinary um, thing because it's got this fabulous screw that gets larger to the middle and smaller to the back so that you're adjusting it as you're going along and you're adjusting the travel so that means you, you use less steam as you go along. But the actual manufacture of that is a masterpiece if you think of how you forge that. And the other thing is it's got this scrumbling of the interior of the cab. Why you wanted the cab to look like it had wood effect, I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, it has it, it's quite common in those days. And what you've got is varnish with a cloth to give it that wood effect. Um, and the driver's side is this side. Like I say, he's got a reasonable view out the front, um, as you can see down there. He's got his controls here uh, and he's got his regulator here. So presumably once he's got it going and he's got it nicely set, he might be able to wedge his way into here and keep, keep it like that. 
so that he sees where he's going and he's a little bit out of the weather but not an awful lot the fireman on this side uh, unfortunately the fireman has has a bigger bench but i guess he sits down less because if you look at it here's the fire hole door here um, and it's ratcheted so you can you can set it at certain points to let the secondary air in but also it's level there's no shoveling plate so whatever he does he's going to have to lift the coal off the floor and chuck it in the firebox uh, from from level um, so he's got extra work to do more back breaking than what happened in in due course on the bigger engines later engines is of course they had a shoveling plate about where that wooden bar is and you also notice actually when I look in the um, in the tender, and I'll just put this over in the tender here, you can see that it's not a very big coal space, basically. Um, you can imagine it needing to be regularly refueled. It's also got big toolboxes, so you can, you can put um, your tools in, you can put your snap in for lunch, whatever, and you can basically fix things as you go if you need to. So also on the tender, you've got a little test uh, cock or tap down here you know to test how much water you've got in the tender uh, it might be useful for washing actually you could put a fill a bucket with it um, and then on this side here you've got um, the handbrake uh, so that effectively you can park up and the thing's not going to roll off um, and that's it it's a reasonably simple old-fashioned mineral engine designed for rolling along slowly with a rake of coal wagons. We're really quite lucky to have an 1870s mineral engine, you know, something designed for freight because it enables us to think about the people that worked those trains that pulled all that material round for industry that allowed industry to develop. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Curator with a Camera. If you have enjoyed it, please pop a like um, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.